Hi kids! Today, we will learn about the movement of water on Earth, or the water cycle. So let's start. Now we know all the parts of water cycle. That is, evaporation, transpiration, precipitation, condensation, collection, infiltration, and surface water runoff. Now, let's try to understand the water cycle. Let's start with the process of evaporation. Evaporation is the change of liquid state of water to gaseous state. So, evaporation occurs all over the earth where water exists. Water from all water bodies keep on heating and changing to gaseous state. So, it's the process of evaporation, because of which water from all the water bodies is moving to the air. And when plants breathe, they release water vapors along with oxygen, which is called transpiration. Sometimes, snow also directly changes to water vapors, and it's called sublimation. So, there are three processes by which water is getting converted to gaseous state. Evaporation, transpiration, and sublimation. So, there are water vapors all over there in the air. And when these water vapors rises high in the air, they cool down and changes to liquid state or condense and forms big clouds in the air. And it's the clouds that result in different forms of precipitation. That is falling of water from the sky in the form of water, snow, hail. So, because of precipitation, the evaporated water again becomes the part of water bodies. Some water seeps down the Earth's surface which is called infiltration, and replenishes the aquifers, which can store fresh water for long periods of time. Precipitation such as snowfall accumulates the water on hills and mountains as ice caps and glaciers. Now, when the weather changes, the water accumulated on hills and mountains in the form of ice or snow melts back and flows to the ground as rivers and streams. And this flowing down of water is called surface runoffs. Not all runoff flows into rivers. Much of it is soaks into the ground as infiltration. Some groundwater finds openings in the land surface and comes out as fresh water springs. Finally, the rivers again joins with the big seas and oceans form where most of the evaporation occurs. So water keeps changing its states and place. And we see there is a continuous movement of water on earth that goes on and on. Water cycle is also known as hydrologic cycle or H2O cycle, and the processes by which water changes its states and place are evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, infiltration, and surface runoff. All these processes also involve exchange of energy, which is why it also leads to temperature changes, like Evaporation cools down the atmosphere. Condensation warms up the atmosphere. The water cycle is very important for the maintenance of most life and ecosystems on the planet. Now let's learn what is the source of energy for water cycle. It is the sun that heats up the water in oceans 
and other water bodies and leads to evaporation. Wind is also the driving force behind clouds that leads to precipitation. And wind too is result of differential heating of earth due to sun. So what we learned? The ultimate source of energy is sun. So kids, today we learned what is water cycle. Now you may go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye-bye. Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects.